name's Lisa and today I'm going to be replacing the motherboard for a desktop computer. First thing we need to do is ground ourselves, which I've already done. Then we need to take off the side panel, which is opposite these ports here. Now this case has one screw, which obviously different cases vary. And then luckily I have a handle, nice and easy. First of all, take note of where your cables and cards are what way up they are and where they're plugged into. This is obviously going to help you later on when we're reassembling the case. So, we need to take any cards out of the motherboard. Some cards are held in by screws, some cards are held in by clips. This one has a screw and a clip. So, we need to take this out, slowly jiggle that out making sure you're holding the edges of the card. Let's now take our cables out of our motherboard. Let's start off with the main power cable. And don't forget, we need to hold this clip at the side to release. Then let's take our four pin power cable out. Once again, pin at the side then any SATA cables and any PATA cables. And now we need to take out the case cables, which are these here. They are connected to buttons on the front of the case, such as the power button and the reset button. If you want to make a note of where they all are, so you know where to put them, when reassembling, and we just pull them out like that, and like that, and the third one like so. So now we've removed all of our cables and our cards, let's remove anything else that may be in the way of our motherboard, such as the power supply, or maybe your hard drive might be in the way. For me, it's going to be the power supply. So I'm just going to take that out now. So that's the power supply taken out. You'll find that the motherboard is usually held in by six screws, but obviously this varies case to case. And it is easiest to lay the case on its side to unscrew the screws. The screws on this motherboard are located here, 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 here and here. So I'm going to continue now unscrewing the motherboard from the case. So now I've removed the screws from the motherboard that was holding it into the case. By the edges of the board I can remove it from the case. Now I've removed the motherboard from the computer, I will continue on to remove the memory, which I do by putting down these two tabs at the side at the same time. And once again with the second one, pull the two tabs down at the same time and remove the memory. So now I need to get to the processor and to do that I need to remove the fan. But to start off with let's remove its power cable. Now on this motherboard in particular we need to remove the heat sink. This does vary from computer to computer but if you're the same as me and you do need to remove your heat sink as well on the other side of the motherboard to the heat sink are these two little buttons here which you just pinch and twist and then you can push the heat sink out on the other side 
as you can see, I've removed the first heat sink. And what I need to do now is unclip this here and pull the heat sink and fan off. And now to remove the processor. And we do this by lifting the arm, which you need to push down and away from the processor to lift up. And then we can remove the processor like so. So let's say this is our new motherboard. The first thing we need to do is pop the processor in. Now as you can see on this processor there are certain locating sections and there are certain pins that are missing which will match up to the holes and areas on the motherboard. So this will fit in and to secure that in we put the arm down and click it into place. So now I'm going to remove the old paste from the processor and to do that I'm going to use a lint free cloth and to help me two cleaning fluids. You can buy these or ones just like these online. So I've finished cleaning the processor and the heatsink. There's no special technique, just get the surfaces clean with small amounts of liquid so you don't spill any onto the motherboard or anything else. Now I need to put some new paste onto the processor. Only a small amount needs to be used here. About a pea sized amount. Now I can spread that around. And put the heat sink back on, which will just click back into place. So now I need to put the second heat sink back on. And how I do this is by pushing these pins into the motherboard. Line them up and just push them in like that. And now I'm going to put in the memory, making sure that this notch matches up with the notch on the motherboard. And the same with the second one. So now we can put the motherboard back into the computer making sure that the ports line up and the screw holes are lined up. So now we can screw the motherboard back into the case securely with the six screws that I mentioned earlier and also as I mentioned earlier the amount of screws on the motherboard varies from computer to computer. So now we've got the motherboard screwed back into the computer. Try to remember not to screw the screws too tightly. Now it's a case of referring to our earlier notes and putting the case cables back. So now I've got the case cables in, I'm going to put the PATA cable in and the SATA cable into the back of the hard drive and the other end into the motherboard. 
So now I'm going to put the power supply back in. Just line the screw holes up and screw it back into place with the four screws. So now I'm going to put the four pin power connector into the motherboard and the main power connector into the motherboard. And now for the graphics card to go back in, a little push. and to screw it securely into place. I've just connected my case fan to my power supply via this cable here. And because my power supply doesn't have an SATA cable, I've bought this cable here, which connects into the back of the hard drive. and connects to the power supply via this cable here. So we just want to make sure that um, none of the cables are blocking any of the fans, which they're not, all good. And then we can put the side of the case back on. Secure that with our screw. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed my video and I'll see you in the next video.